Welcome to part two of Moped Muggers. I'm Dr. Simon Harding. I'm here to take you through the crime of moped mugging. In part one, I spoke with somebody who was actively involved. I also spoke to a victim of moped mugging. This time round, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail with somebody who's actively involved in stealing mopeds, breaking them down and selling them on. I'm also going to find out if he has a history of this type of crime and how long he's been doing that for. So, his name's Freddy, let's go meet him now. So here I am with Freddy. Freddy, thanks for arranging to meet me today. I want to ask you some questions. First of all, how long have you been riding out doing moped crime? Well, I've been doing it since I was the age of 16. How old are you now? 26. 26. 26. Yeah. So you've been doing it for a number of years? Yes. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah, how did you get started? Basically, I got started from you know, a drunk off, off with you know, a few guys that was involved in motorbikes. You know, seen a lot of motorbikes all the time. Therefore, they, you know what I mean, they told me I have to, you know, start getting proper involved in what they do. Right, and what were they doing? Well, they was doing everything. We were getting motorbikes, breaking them down, doing about more than 10 a day. Wow, so wow. Yeah. And you knew these boys were active in this? Yeah. They were, I knew it, I saw it, I saw it all, they, you know what I mean, they, saw it. they had to show me everything first before I could even go out there on the road. Right, so you rode out with them before you even got started, got started yourself. yeah. And what kind of things did you see? Well, I saw, I saw pretty much everything that you could do with motorbike. I saw pretty much everything you could do with motorbike, to be honest. And they were actively involved in all of this? Oh, yeah. And did they approach you to join them or did you ask to, to join in with what they were doing? Well, what it is, uh, I had a motorbike when I was obviously 16. We pumped into them uh, on the road sort of thing and then from then we just started meeting each other more and from there, we, you know, we started doing other things and like, getting involved with other things. Right, but you must have known they were involved in criminal activity. Yeah, you had a fair, fair, fair good, fair good idea. Right, okay, and that didn't bother you? It never, no, it never. Right. So when you asked these guys if you could ride out with them, you yeah. must have known you were going to get involved in criminal activity. Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, I did, I did. Yeah. And was that part of the attraction? Yeah, that was part of it all, yeah, that was part of it, yeah. And so you were expecting to make money or, or get a motorbike? What were you expecting? It was, it was like, it's a big thing, what he was doing, what he was doing, you know. He was doing it basically, it was mainly for the money, you know, for parts sell the parts, you know, someone put an order in something and we just go out and look for it and get it. Right, okay, so uh, some of these bikes would be stolen to order then? Yeah. And how would that work? Someone would call these guys and say, I want a bike? How does yeah, it work? Basically, uh, yeah, basically, yeah, we will have someone amongst, it, amongst the, motor, uh, the motorcycle sort of, you know, community and a few of them sort of come up to us and say, I need that and that, could you go out and get it for that sort of bike? Right, and would you have to go out and find it then? Yeah, we'll go out and look for it. Uh, does that mean driving round? Yeah, we'll drive around and look for it. Right, okay, and you would do this how many times a week? Well, we should do it pretty much every day. Well, that's a lot of riding out. That is. Yeah, and were you lucky every time? Sometimes it would get a bit, a bit sticky. But most of the time was all right. Okay, so you would find a bike uh, that matched the request, mm. the order, and uh, what would you do? Is this? Are you just looking for parts, or are you looking for a whole bike? Basically, no. We never keep the whole bike. Basically, what it is, we will look, this person will look for a specific part for the bike. But we've got, when we go and find the bike, we've got no time to be there trying to get the part out. So we just take the whole bike and just break it all down. From right. There. Okay. So you would take the whole bike. Yeah. How many of you would ride out together? pretty much depends it, it all depends you know where we're going you know what bike we need to get um how many we need to get right and once you found a bike what then where would you take it we'll take it to one of our yards 
one of your yards. Yeah. So you have several yards. Yeah, we've got a few yards, like breaking yards. Oh, I see. Got, yeah. Okay. And how would you get the bike from the, the street or the road to the yard? The majority of the time, there's basically this one guy that used to roll with us. Um, he used to have a buzz about starting the bike up right. and riding the bike up. But some of us, we have, we don't, we're not up for all that. Okay. So we just we roll up in the van, roll up next to the motorbike, chuck it in the van, close the door and go. Right, so what kind of van? Uh, a Luton van? Biggest van, yeah, right. like wheelbase. Okay, okay. So you would uh, snap the lock on the, the bike, take the bike, put it in the van, drive off? Yeah, if there was a lock in it, whatever we need to get off the bike to get it gone, we would do. Okay, and what would that involve then? That would involve, you know, a few of us, you know, putting in some input, you know, you know what I mean? So if there's like two chains in it, then you obviously need quite a few, you need more than two of us, one to watch, one's driving, one's taking off the front lock, one's taking off the, the, the other lock. Right, okay, so w would you bring some tools with you to do yeah, this? Yeah, we'll have to bring tools with us, yeah. Okay, what kind of things? Basically, we've got, basically in the van, we've really got the toolbox there, oh. what we need for everything. Because we've got a good idea on motorcycles, we know exactly what tool we need for what thing to get the motorcycle up and running. Okay, and there so and then. how quickly would you be able to perform this uh, function of breaking off the chains? Well, we can do it within five minutes. Within five, five minutes. minutes, right, that's okay. quick it can be. And that's as quick, could that's you do it quicker? Quick. Well, we've been known to do it quicker, have yeah. You? We've been known to okay. do it quicker. And you have somebody always watching out, keeping an yeah, eye? That's yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. And I guess this became a regular activity for you then, so you became very skilled at it, am I right? Yeah, it became very skilled and it gets addictive. Right, tell me about that. What, what exactly does that mean, getting addictive? Basically, you know, you're going out and getting expensive bikes, you know, you're getting paid good money for them. So it just makes you just want to keep going out and doing it and doing it, you know? Right, okay, so you, would every bike bring a cash benefit for you? Every bike would, yeah. yeah. Right, every about how much? Would. Minimum for a bike, you get about 300, 400 pounds. Right. For the whole bike or just for the parts? Just for the parts. Right. Okay. And you have, uh, what, a ready-made market? People who want these, these yeah, parts? Yeah, we know what to look for as well. We what bike to look for, what to get from the bike, what sells them, you know, what's rare, what parts okay. are rare. Give me an example. Like for example, you might get a, a classical bike. Right. And then parts are hard to come by. Okay. So if we find a classical bike, that's most likely we're going to put it in the van. Right. Because, you know, it's got parts in it that are, that are ancient, sort of exclusive, hard to come by parts. Right. And would that be sold then to somebody here in the UK? Anywhere. Anywhere. Maybe them parts, they, they can be sold to anywhere, you know. Right, right. Uh, because I have heard some parts are sold out of the country to Pakistan, uh, Nigeria, places like that. Is that is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. And you're familiar with that? Have you, have you yeah. been involved in that side yeah, of things? Yeah, we do a lot of shipping sometimes as well, yeah. Shopping, you do shipping? shipping. Yeah. Okay. That, that sounds like moving the whole bike out of the country. Yeah, sometimes we need to do that, yeah. Sometimes we need right. to do that. We might have a request. Someone might want the whole bike, so therefore we just, you know, take it off. Take it out of the country, push it out. Okay, the but that's quite a big undertaking. I mean, you must have people who are ready to help you to do that. Yeah, yeah, we've got, a, yeah, everything's there for that as well, ready to sort of, you know, sort of just, you know what I mean? You take a little phone call, make sure the shipping is all there, ready it's to go. All there. That's it, we put it on and it goes. Okay, so, and, and, and would you shift, you wouldn't just shift one bike at a time though, would you? The order's got to be worth the order. It's got to be worth the order, right. So you could shift several bikes at one time. What would you do? Put them in a container, or, or how do you get them out of the country? Yeah, they'll go in a container. We'll put a few in a container. Right, and documentation? Yeah, the good documentation. Yeah, all documentation, of course. Right. Okay. Uh, is this falsified documentation? The documentation? No, it's for a legitimate company. Right. Oh, but, I see. Okay. Sort of. You know what I'm saying? It's a bit. Sometimes it can be a bit like fraudulent. Sometimes. Okay. Fraudulent. Right, okay. But there's obviously a great benefit here for, for you in terms of making money. Yeah. And how, money how would the money made. come back to you? Say it again? How would the money come back to you? Um, we'll, we'll come back electronically. I see. So you get a payment, what, into your account? Into a pay PayPal account. PayPal yeah. account, okay. And would it be one lump sum? Yeah, we have to do one lump sum, yeah. And then that would be split up between your boys? Yeah, all of us, yeah. Right, okay. And does everyone get an equal share? Yeah, everyone gets an equal share, of course, yeah. So these have to be people that you trust, I think. Am I right? 
Yeah, of course, of course, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes, you know, some might want to take more than others, and that's not the way we work. Right, okay, so you have an agreement beforehand, you're going to split everything? Yeah, yeah. Equal course. share? Equal share. Right. Uh, any time when that's not worked? Um, it's not as it goes, which is very, very good. Right. You know, and I've heard from other, other sort of people that sometimes there's some stories that's gone out the window, you know what I mean? So that trust breaks down sometimes? Yeah, sometimes it does happen, yeah. And right. Other things, then leads to other things, you know? Such as what? Like, you know, getting in dis disputes and things like that. Amongst the group Amongst of boys? Amongst the group of boys. Okay. And how many boys are we talking here? We're talking more than 20, 30. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, but you wouldn't all ride out together as 20 or 30? All depends. You might have lock, You might have something somewhere that's got 20 bikes. So we need a big squad to go and clear that 20 bikes. Right. Okay. What about the police? What, what's their involvement here? I mean, do they chase you down for this? Yeah, yeah. We've had a few chases with the police. But the thing is, uh, luckily, you know, you know what I mean? We've just we've got away, but there was a few times we've been stopped and all that, pulled over. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Took everything off us, sort of thing. Really? Yeah. What happens then? Then we obviously we got convicted and all that. Oh, did you? Yeah. Have you? So you have been convicted yeah, for, for, yeah. for this. And and what sentence did you get? Uh, no, we not. We got a fine. You got a, a big, fine. Huge fine and community service. Right. How much was your fine? The fine was about two thousand pounds. I see. Okay. Uh, was that just you, or was that everybody in your squad? That was uh, everybody, everybody in our squad. Right. Not everybody, but majority. The majority, okay. Yeah. So, having been arrested, none of you went to prison for, for, for stealing the bikes? Yeah, a few of us have. A few of us have gone to prison for stealing the bikes. Yeah. Right, okay. I see. So, um, and what happens when they come out of prison? Do they return to doing what they were doing, or do yeah, they... Yeah, they do. They do. It's an addictive thing, doing it, you know? What's addictive about it? Sometimes it's the rage speed on the bike, you know, um, just the money that you may be can made from it as well. And what it is, um, there's one, there's, there's a few of them, they like getting chases by the police. They like being chased when by the police. When they're on these things, yeah. Right. They don't mind, you know, getting chased when they're on these things. So, have you yourself been pursued yeah, been by the police? This, yeah. What's it like? Tell me. It's a, it is like being on a roller coaster. Really? You've got to get away from that police before that comes out, basically. And that's possible. Before? Before the helicopter Before comes the out. helicopter comes And that's possible, that's possible. That's possible. It sounds like a game. That's what it is. You're, whoa, you're correct. It is just like a game. Have you watched, have you watched the Striker Photo? Yeah. GTA? Mm -hmm. It's like that. When you're doing this sort of frame, you know? So how long before the helicopter comes out? Well, it depends. It all depends. But sometimes the helicopter's out already, but it's just about getting where it needs to get to. Sometimes it's, lack, it's, it's, it's on the helipad and uh, they're not even in it. So if you can get away from that officers that are controlling and watching where that helicopter is going to be coming, you get away from them, then that's all right. Okay. Yeah. And what difference does the helicopter make in, in terms of the pursuit? Oh gosh, the helicopter doesn't, doesn't come across any obstacles. Does right. It? So if the helicopter's involved, you're much more likely to be caught? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so what tactics would you use to get away if the helicopter's already engaged? From the helicopter... It's... It's pretty... Pretty... Pretty difficult. Okay. That's what I said. When they're behind pulling you, you have to get away from them before they can tell the helicopter where you are next. Right, I see, okay. If you can't, then you're better off just getting off your bike, blowing it up, there and then I'm running off. Okay, so how do you mean blowing it up? Basically just set a light to it so there's no, there's no sort of, you know, DNA on it from when the police officers come and try and do what they got so to do. So would you do that? Yeah, sometimes we'll have to do that. Really? Yeah, a few of our boys have done that. Uh, so, setting fire to the petrol tank? Yeah. Uh, tell me how you would do that. Basically what you would do, you just pull the thing up, put a bit of, um, put a bit of tissue in there, light it, cover the whole bag with petrol, light the, light the paper, that will light, and you let the whole back, and the whole back will flame. Right, okay. But it does it blow up? It does blows it, up. Right. You don't want to, it's still going to go in flames. Would that not be dangerous to you? No, because once I do that, and I know the back's in flames, I'm gone. You're I'm off. off. You know okay. I mean? 
But what about uh, other people? I mean, wh where would these kind of explosions take place? No, they won't take place. I would never do it in a place where there's people, loads of people walking. You know, I prefer to do it. I'll pull up in the park. Right. Then I've got more places to run as well. Okay. Okay. And so tell me about getting away from the police normally before the helicopters are yeah. involved. What kind of tactics would you use? It's speed and back roads. It's not stopping. For the, not stopping for nothing at all. And just using that speed. Hit the motorway, gone. You know? What about uh, some of the back street areas, the uh, the alleyways and things like that? Have you used that before? Yeah, yeah, I have used that before. I have used that before. I've used that before, and that's proper. That's proper helped me out. Right. You right. know what I mean? So why is that? Because once you get through the alleyway, the car can't get through the alleyway as well. The police car. So they've got no choice. They've got to go all the way around. But by the time they go all the way around, I'm, I'm on the motorway. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. For example, we're in Senate, we're in um, South Park now, Ilford, yeah. I'll be in, I'll be in, I'll be up in, um, I'll be up in uh, Basildon within about ten minutes. Right. Right. So that 20, speed factor is very important. Yeah. Okay. And and do the police always pursue you in cars or do they pursue you on bike? It all depends on what's popped up on the on the AMPR, um, what's been logged in the system, them sort of things. Right, yeah. okay, so you're very familiar with all of those kind of terms. Yeah. AMPR. AMPR. Do you know what it stands for? Automatic. Number plate uh, recognition, recognition system, yeah. yeah. What about CCTV? Does that not uh, concern you at all? CCTV, they can't, what it is, they can't cover it, literally everything that goes on. They possibly could. And, and who is it? How is it that the police get involved in the first place? Does somebody call them? Yeah, sometimes what it is, you will pull up to someone's address, and uh, it could be a neighbour looking at, looking at what's going on, van pulling up, this and that. Sometimes they will hear, right? Or we're doing the locks. Right. What does that mean? And when they hear that sound in the lock, that means obviously the neighbours are thinking, what's that noise? Oh, I see. Okay. You know what I mean? So sometimes they'll just ring the police. See what's, what, it's, what that noise is all about. And what it is, you, you know what I mean? We have to get away. So the police will get involved. They'll get involved. So yeah. would you steal a bike from somebody's uh, forecourt or front yard? Perhaps? Anywhere. We'll anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. I've heard sometimes that uh, guys who are involved in moped crime yeah. will use a spotter. <laughs> this is somebody who will go out and identify bikes sitting yeah. in forecourts or. Yeah. Uh, or, or waiting to be taken. Yeah. Is that something you've done before? Yeah, basically. What? It, yeah, you're, that's what it is. Basically, we've got people that go around and drive around looking to stop, and then they come back to the ones that actually go and get a stop. Right. Okay. So they would drive around and do a recce, basically. Yes. Yeah. And then what? Inform you and say there's a bike here yeah. or there's a bike at this yeah, place. Yeah, there's one bike there. That's worth that much. Someone's put, someone put an order in for that. Someone put order into that. That's that much. You know what I mean? Right. And so it sounds like it's quite planned then. Yeah, it's planned. Most of it is planned. Right. We have to know what we're looking for and what we need to get for how much. So do the boys in your squad then come together to decide you're going to ride out in a particular day or evening? Or? Yeah. Right. And then you tell me a bit more about this plan and how you follow the plan. Yeah. Um, basically what it is, someone will come what bike they're looking for, what parts. Obviously, whatever the parts they're looking for doesn't matter, we just get the whole bike. Right. There's no time to be getting the part there and then on the scene. Right. So therefore, we will take the whole bike away. So yeah, someone will come, order a bike, put an order in, we get the team together, drive around looking for the bike, take the bike. Right. Have you ever had a member of the public intervene? Yeah, yeah. Right, and what's happened there? We just had to decide. Just carry on what we're doing. Just carry on what we're doing. Well, we've seen the bike. We know how much is in that mobile, how much money is involved in that bike. Right. Well, you know what I mean. We just go. You know what I mean. We just keep going. So, out. how much money are we talking about for for a bike or for bike, a bike parts? For a good bike, breaking down, probably earn up to about a grand. Oh really? A okay. Grand a bike. Okay. And how many of those would you do in a day? In a day, we'd probably do about ten minimum. Ten. Oh, that's a lot. That's, yeah. that's quite a lot of money then. Mm. Okay. So, if a member of the public were to engage with you and try and stop you from taking their bike, yeah. what action would you take? Um, 
the burning shoe, it depends on at the time. But most of the time, we just get in our thing and drive off and leave the bike. So you try not to get those interactions? Yes. If, okay. But if one came and somebody was very angry and aggressive, what would you do? Best we just chop them off us and we just get in our thing and go. Okay. Have you had to do that before? We've had to do that a few times. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And times. do you carry weapons, you and your boys, when you go out? Yeah, we have to, we have to, we have to, yeah. Yeah, why is that? That's for sort of, you know, if it gets too much for us. We don't tend to want it to get too much for us, but we like to, you know, get the job done. The bats need to go, the bats need to go. The bat can't be taken because of, you know, the people coming out, this and that, and it can't be taken at all, then we'll leave it. Hmm. So what kind of weapon would you would you carry with you? Um, we would carry a um, baseball bat. A baseball bat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And would you carry it personally? It would be there in the van. It would be there? Okay. Be there in the van. Yeah. Would you have anything on your person? Um, not, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. Now, we've talked a lot about um, taking bikes and bike parts. Yeah. So some other boys who are involved in moped crime yeah. uh, use the bikes to yeah. steal from other people, uh, yeah. maybe down the high street, that yeah. type of thing. Have you been involved in that kind of thing before? Yeah, we've got, yeah. You have? Yeah. Okay. And in, in terms of the difference between doing the stealing the bike yeah. and stealing items that yeah. people are carrying, which is more profitable? Um, we don't know what the people are carrying sometimes. Sometimes we'll roll up, we'll be that, we'll be some woman there, handbag, we'll roll up on the, on the thing on the curb, we'll snatch your handbag, you know what I mean? Someone will be on the phone, we'll roll up, you know, take her phone. Okay. Her phone, his phone, or whatever. Okay. And how many times have you been involved in doing that? Many times, more than 20 times. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is that something you do on your own for your, while you're driving the bike, or do you have somebody on the back of your bike? No, I have someone on the back. Okay. Uh, and tell me how the, the jobs work. One drives, one snatches? Yeah, one rides, one snatch. But sometimes the driver has got to help the man, help the snatcher sometimes because the people sort of tussle him. So, you know what I mean? So, for me to get away, instead of having someone with us while we're dragging them and let them get hurt, would rather just stop the thing, stop the bike, get them off of us, uh, start the bike up, you know what I mean, and just drive off. Right, okay. So that's something you've had to do before, is it? Yeah. It's where both of you get off the bike, basically. Yeah. yeah. Right. Anybody been injured? Yeah, we've been injured a few times. No, I'm, I meant the other people. Oh, any other people? No, no, we don't. We, we try our best to ensure they don't, you know? Right, okay. But what if you got into a really aggressive situation? We just get them off, you know what I mean? We just chuck them off of us. Right, okay. And so you've got phones, you've got handbags, what else have you? Handbags, we've got purses. Right. You know, pretty much you name it, anything, you know what I mean? And what do you do with that stuff once you've got it? Once we've got it, we just go, then we go and put it down somewhere, then we go out and look for more. Okay, when, when you say put it down, how, what do you mean? Yeah, we just go to somewhere, like someone's house, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'll be, I'm up in my house, well, I'm riding off. Here's the you know what I mean, passing the stash. Right, okay, so I can, a, a stash place. A stash place, right, yeah. okay. Uh, and how many phones are, or items a day would you be able to get from doing this? Um, possibly, we can we can rake into about, one day we raked we rake in about 30 phones. Uh, how much? 30 phones. 30 phones, 30 phones. right, okay. I, iPhones or a whole different All different collection? phones, all different right. phones. And what would you do with those phones? We've got, a, we've got a guy that buys them off us. Right, so you have a contact who will buy the phones from you? Yeah. Right, okay. And how much would you get for those 30 phones? It all depends. Right. It all depends on, on the phone, you know, the model, how old the phone is, you know. And I hear sometimes they just want the batteries as well, is that right? Yeah, some, you know what it is? Sometimes they, they, the technician is a technician, he will want the phone to part. But when his customers come in, we we'll break down the phone and use them parts of the phone. Okay, and what happens to the phones then? Are they, they shipped out of the country too sometimes? Sometimes they are, because the network. It, just explain what you mean. Yeah, the network won't work in, in the country. Right, oh I see, okay. How do you pay the technician for doing this? No, he will buy it off us. He will buy it off yeah. you, so he's making something? Yeah. Right. 
I understand. Okay. And uh, I mean, this is a, a real kind of life experience for you, I think, it isn't is, it? It is. Yeah. Exciting. It's exciting in a way, but you know, it depends on what you like doing. You might like getting chased by the police and on these on these machine things, on these things. You know what I mean? Sometimes it could be a little little exciting. But you can understand it would cause a lot of uh, distress to the people who have had their items stolen or snatched. It would do, it would do, yeah, it would do. It would How do. would you feel if someone grabbed your uh, iPhone from you? Yeah, and... I'll, I'll, I'll feel very, you know, feel very pissed off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's quite a thing, but I, I mean, obviously you're engaged in it a lot. You've been doing it for quite a number of years now, so... Yeah, we Have yeah. you never thought of giving it up, or...? Oh, what it is, it's, it's a, like I said, it's a, it's, in a, it's a buzz, it's an excitement thing, you know? When you're on these toys, these far things, it's, it's a buzz, excitement, the speed of these things, incredible. So that's very much part of it, isn't it? Yeah. And do you have a particular area of London that you like to operate in? You know, see anything, we just roll up on the curb, take what we need to take, you know what I mean? Right, okay. And, yeah, I mean, did, you may not want, wish to answer this. Do you have a full-time job or a, a job at all? I don't. You don't? I don't have a full-time job, no. Would you be doing this if you did have a, a job uh, or a career? No, because if I was at work, I'd be too much thinking about the buzz of this. Would you like to work with bikes at some point in the future, maybe? Uh, I would like to at the same time. Yeah, I would like to. Yeah, I would like to. I like bikes. Yeah, I actually like bikes. But at the same time, I love the speed. I love the, the, the change. Exciting. So it's very addictive for you, I think. Yeah, it's addictive, yeah. If, if you were to give this up in, in uh, a few months' time or a year's yeah. time, what kind of thing do you think you would be doing instead? I'd be doing something with motorbikes. Would you? I work for a dealership, and hopefully, you know what, I don't think I'll be, you know, involved in what I was involved in before. So you do see yourself giving that up at some point? Yeah, we give it up. Yeah, we would like to, yeah. Freddie, one of the things I wanted to ask you was about uh, cuts to the police. You will have heard, of course, that uh, the police numbers have fallen. Is this something that you recognise? Um, to be honest with you, yeah, I have recognised that, to be honest, because we don't really see much of them anymore. Okay. When we're out on the road doing what we've got to do. Right. And, uh, tell me a bit more about that. I mean, how do you know there are fewer of them? Because we're doing things. On our mobile bikes, man. Um, it's, 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 it seems much easier. Seems easier. Easier, yeah. Do you mean there are simply not enough police around to chase you and pursue Possibly, you? Yeah, that's what I think it is. Because you know, we've not, not come across recently. We've not come across any, you know, these chases or anything. Right. Okay. So you're being pursued less often now? Yes. That's something you've really noticed? Yes. Okay. Interesting. And has that changed the way that you operate? Has that made you feel bolder or...? It's made me feel... No. We've always been told to still sort of move properly, you know? Right. In a way to not sort of attack police or... Okay. Things like that. Okay, but if there are no police around, you could be more uh, bolder in what you do, and could you not? If there was more police around, you would... It's gonna... Make, we need to do more harder and it's going to make situations more worse. For example, because of the crime, we're on the back now, we pull the out of We're not going to pull over. We're on to something extremely fast, right. extremely quicker, extremely easier to fix the back. We're not going to stop. Okay. And what about this thing of taking off the helmet? Would you ever take your helmet off? Would that prevent oh, the police? The helmet doesn't come off, no. Okay, but if you did, would that prevent the police from pursuing you? Possibly not all the time, not all the time. This is what the last I said, overhead. That's why what is, we, we have to get away from them behind. Right. Before they get over. Before the, and the overhead is the helicopter. The helicopter. Right, okay. And they'll be ordering that from the radio in the car. From behind, yeah. Okay. So, therefore, we get away, Four, two, ahead. Okay. And can you hear the helicopter through your helmet? How do you know the helicopter's been been engaged? Because I know for a fact, and they know something's going to be difficult. 
to be caught on the path, they're going to pull it over here. They're going to cargo on the Okay. Now, another thing I've heard recently is that sometimes boys on bikes like this are being uh, called in as hitmen for uh, various revenge attacks and things connected with uh, gang life and road life. Is this something you're aware of? Yeah, I'm aware of that, yeah, I'm aware of that. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Have you been involved in anything like that? Yes, I have, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So, tell me a bit about how that would work. Uh, basically, someone put in, put in something, you know, someone sort of, you know, done something. A request? A request. Right. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, we'll find it much easier to go and do it with a motorbike, but easy to do a lot of things. Right, okay. So, if a request comes through, mm. it's to carry out a hit. Now that can be a, a range of different things. It might just be a, a, a physical attack, uh, but it could be something really very, very serious. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Am, am I right there? Yeah. Okay, so what kind of things have you perhaps been involved in uh, previously? Um, basically, what it is, um, recently, someone never be you know, about something about someone and that. Um, person, he, he owes money for this, and he makes a bat, therefore we have to go, you know, see the guy on the motorbike. Right. Always on the motorbike, put it on the back, pass it to the other the motorbike is still left and running. Just ready to, you know, take off. Okay, so you were the driver and the passenger was the one who engaged yes. with the other guy. And it was around a debt issue, is that yes. right? the guy subject to violence and, and injured or hurt? Um, it depends on the person. We, you know, sometimes it's straightforward when we, when we go out and do our job. Sometimes it's not. One of your peers at the other, other side of the park, I think, you know what? Sometimes you know what? I'll be on the motorbike giving it a rev, you know, just to make sure the engine keeps running. Right, okay. So it's your job to keep everything ticking over? Yeah, keep on over. Okay. And obviously that's so you can get away quickly, yeah. is that right? I see. Okay, mm. I understand. Yeah. And I, I hear also that the police have um, uh, stingers that they will throw out uh, onto, the, onto the road. Yeah. So it's with spikes in them. Have you come upon that type of thing? I uh, have. Yeah? Bad. Has that had any impact? Two to three times, it has. It has made me more made the journey, for me and the passenger, more scary. Right. Because I had this chuck them out, I have to go on the curb. Right. I have to go on the curb. Right. So I've gone on the curb, and I think I've known you Okay. Okay, yeah. and I hear also they have now a, a, a dye, that, uh, a gel that they can spray onto you, perhaps from uh, coming up behind you, and the, the spray will have DNA within the gel. And if you are arrested, they can put you under a UV light and they can check to see if you've got the DNA gel on Okay, you. yeah, that's another thing as well. Basically, we like to... We have more than one costume. We have one costume, we have about three to four costumes. Just for identity. Right. Okay, so if you got covered, what would you do? I'll take that off. Right. And, and possibly burn it. And burn it, okay. Yeah. Okay, but you would take it off and dump it anyway. Yeah. Right. I see, interesting. But you're aware of those tactics that the police have? You have to be aware of them, yeah. I would have said the first time I was, these, these tactics come across me, I was like, whoa. For example, whoa, that's what was put on me. What's the smart thing to do? Take it off. Right. And you've got a cutter underneath. Press okay, one. right. So how do you how do you become aware of these police tactics then? Because the people around us, you know what's going on around us. We listen to what they tell us about them tactics. Right. Or we come across it. Okay. And we don't come up with them things again, so we like to find ways to avoid getting someone across them people. I see. And once all of this has happened and you're, you're finished doing what you do for the day and, you, and you're back, do you all group together back at someone's house? All depends. All depends how the situation of turn up. If it's sometimes you have to all have to be alone. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. 
to a meet up maybe a week after, two okay. weeks after, a month after. And then once yeah. you do meet up again, do you have a kind of debrief of the, of the yeah, event? A debrief, yeah, what's going on, what's happened, you know, where's the bikes now, you know, things like that. Right, okay, so you kind of share that information amongst each other? Yes, we do, yeah. Okay. To see what anyone wants to say, any questions for anyone, anyone to ask, you know, then we can sort of advise them in the right way. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. See, and 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 do you talk about how you can improve what you do when you're having these meetings? Yeah, we like to try and improve. We like to try and improve on, improve, improve on what we do every single day. Right. Improve, okay. Yeah. So tactics and uh, maneuvers and things like that you would talk about. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll talk about that and, you know, you know, find a way to sort of avoid coming across these things that can sort of make our, our journeys longer. Yeah, I see. Our job's harder. Right. And we go out and do our motorbike, motorbike. I see. And are you, are you due to ride out again anytime soon? Yeah, 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 we've all met up. Um, we're looking, you know, we've got a date, few dates that we're going to be going out. We've got a few orders from it. Uh, is that here in, uh, in North East London? It could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. And what's the, the, the furthest uh, extent you've ever had to go for a job? Outside London? Have you travelled up, up country anywhere? Yeah, yeah, I've had to travel out to, um, before I travelled all the way up to North. I was up in um, the the past um, in Birmingham. All right, in Birmingham. Yeah. Okay. Birmingham. Okay, just before there. Yeah. And that was specifically to do this type of crime? Yeah, to see what it was. Right. Okay, I see. So that was a specific trip, yeah. was it for a specific thing? Yeah. But generally, what, I guess you would stay in around the London area, is that right? Yeah. Most of the basically it depends what job you want to go out on. If you know the job where we go we we go around, we just go around looking. So I might put in for an order and then just you know we just go around and then you know for that. Right, thing. okay. It sounds like you're very flexible and ready to move around for Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll be ready to move right, around. Yeah. I see. Okay, okay. So and I haven't asked you this, but um Sometimes the boys that are involved in this kind of crime yeah. are uh, gang affiliated. Is, is, is that is that yeah, an yeah. issue for you? Stuff is, most of the stuff is gang related. Right. And you yourself, are you connected to a specific yeah, gang? Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. You don't need to tell me which one, but yeah. um, you know, it's, so it is definitely part of gang crime it and is. gang culture. That's correct. It? Yeah. Part of it. Big part of it. I've also heard one or two boys do get engaged in this crime as individuals. So is it more individuals or is it more uh, street gang stuff? Basically, what it is, it all depends sometimes. Sometimes a person lives quiet on their own on his bike and do what they've got to do. But with us, we prefer to go over passenger. One drives, one does what they've got to do with the passenger, you know? Right, okay. Let's see. So what we learned there, through that interview with Freddy, is a range of very interesting aspects to this type of crime. Firstly, this boy had been involved for a number of years, so moped crime as we know it is not new. Secondly, the large number of people involved in his squad, other guys, some of them probably older than him, who were involved in driving round, finding these bikes, stealing the bikes and then selling them on. So this is an issue that's much more coordinated, much more planned perhaps than we think. We tend to think it's very random. It seems to be much more planned than that. Thirdly, we find the amount of money that's involved in this type of crime, from selling the bikes or parts of the bike. 
stealing the items and selling them on. But what's very interesting for me is what Freddie was saying about the buzz, the adrenaline, the pursuit by the police, the speed of the bike and his connection with the bike. All of that very interesting stuff. Clearly, these are the things that make this a very adhesive crime. A crime that young, young men in particular want to do and want to get involved in. It has all the thrill, all the buzz that they're looking for. And it has the benefits and the advantages. Join me now as we move on to part three. I want to look in more detail about how they actually break the chains and get into the bike. How they break the bike down. And we'll be speaking to a copper who will give us his particular perspective on how and why moped crime is taking place. Dr. Simon Harding, Moped Crime. <laughs>